Okay, so today we're going to be practicing writing chemical structures of organic compounds in three forms, in the skeletal, extended, and condensed forms. So we're going to start with the skeletal form and kind of explain what that really means. So like when you think of a skeleton, you're just thinking of the bones. This is really just the bones of the structure. So I'm going to have a pretty simple compound right here. And what I want to point out, this is an example of skeletal skeletal structure. You see there's no letters here, but this is a chemical. And so the reason there's no letters is because in organic chemistry we're really dealing with carbon, we're really dealing with hydrocarbons, so this is just a really, really fast way to do this. Um, and so I'm going to write this all three ways so you can see why the skeletal is kind of preferred by organic chemists, just this really, really quick abbreviation. You saw it took me like two seconds to draw this. And um, that's really because each one of these corners, so right here and right here, so every place two lines meet or a line ends, what that means is that's a carbon with the appropriate number of hydrogens attached to it. So this has one, two, three, four, five, six carbons total here. So we're going to draw this in the extended form right now. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you can see in the extended form, I just have the carbons. I've left off the hydrogens for right now. Just so you can see that the shape is the same. So this carbon matches right this corner. This corner matches this carbon, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down. So in the skeletal, we don't see any carbons, and also what we don't see is hydrogens. So in the extended, we would include every single atom. So that would include the carbons that we've already drawn, and this would also include the appropriate number of hydrogens. Remembering that carbon requires four bonds. So if this is a single bond, that counts as one. A double bond would count as two. This one, I put three hydrogens on here because we had this one carbon-carbon bond. We need three others so that there's a total of four bonds on each carbon. So this one has one carbon-carbon bond here, one carbon-carbon bond here. So it would need two more hydrogen bonds. Same here, two bonds already needs two more. Two bonds already needs two more. Two bonds already needs two more, so we fill those in with hydrogens. And this one on the end only has one carbon-carbon bond, so this needs three. So we notice a pattern. Any interior carbons that are bound with single bonds, they're, they're going to need two hydrogens. And the ones on the end with single bonds, those are going to need three hydrogens. Okay, and so we see comparing the amount of space that the skeletal takes up to what's extended takes up, which one's bigger? Yes, the extended is much bigger. This is much simpler to draw. This took much, much longer. Okay, so those are two methods, and these mean the exact same molecule, but it's much easier to look at the skeletal. And the last one I want to talk about is the condensed form, and I'm just going to write it right beneath the extended form. So the condensed form, this is really popular if you are physically typing out the structure because drawing these bonds with these particular angles, extremely, extremely difficult using a keyboard, isn't it? If you want to type up a Word document, this is not, the way, this is not how you're going to do it. This would be great for handwriting, drawing on a board, filling in a blank in an exam. But if you have to type this out, you'll need to use the condensed form. And basically, if this is the extended form where you see every single bond, and skeletal shows you basically nothing, and you have to remember that each corner is a carbon with the appropriate number of H's, the condensed is somewhere in between. So it shows you, it's basically like the chemical formula, but drawn out structurally. And it kind of shows you what's attached to what. It's a little bit, well, but without showing you the physical space that it's taking up. So in the condensed, we're going to look at this one carbon at a time. So here's the first carbon. And what we see here is that this formula would be CH3. So that's the first thing we write. So we're going to break this into individual units. I'm going to use different colors as well. Okay, so that's the first thing we write. This is the very, very end. We know that there's going to be another CH3 at the end. Okay, so the purpose of this condensed is to kind of break it down so you can still kind of tell the structure uh, but 
without having to draw in all the bonds. So we break this one carbon unit at a time. And we know that whatever comes immediately behind the carbon, that's what's attached to the carbon in front of it. So we know in this purple one that these there's three hydrogens that are attached to a carbon, and that's on the end, because it's the first thing here. And it just goes in order left to right. This is going to go left to right as well. Next one, we're doing this in pink. This is CH2, because there's only two H's there. So that's the very next thing. CH2, boom, right there. Let's try yellow. Next one, next carbon unit is another CH2, a carbon with two hydrogens. Next one, how about blue? Another CH2. How about maybe a green? Boom, boom, boom. And look, one more CH2. And then finally, here on the end, got our last unit, and that is a CH3. So, looking at this, maybe if you're typing this out or writing this out, you would just see CH3, CH2, CH2, C. So, so I'm showing it now without any of the colors. That's all I'm doing. And what you can see is the total number of carbons and what's attached to them. So, one, two, three, four, five, six total carbons here, which matches our skeletal. One, two, three, four, five, six, which matches our extended. One, two, three, four, five, six. These are three different ways to write the same one. So, and, and in the condensed, we see the individual carbon units. Here we see all the individual bonds, and this is like the big summary. So as long as you understand what each of these corners mean, the skeletal is just fine. So. Skeletal, extended, and condensed can all be used to represent the exact same chemical in three different ways. So now let's give another example. I'm just going to delete my work really quick of something just a little bit more complicated. Maybe a little bit shorter. We'll break down just three carbons. Three carbon example. X. Let's clean it up here for a sec. Okay. So, or four carbons rather. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to start with a new chemical. And instead of just being all carbons, let's add in a functional group. Can't have fun without a functional group. Okay, and now let's try the skeletal. Oops, if I could spell. Extended. Let me try again extended, and then um, condensed. We'll do the condensed below the extended. Structural forms of this. Okay, and you could start with the condensed and end up with extended and skeletal from that as well. I'm just showing you one direction for now. Okay, so in our extended, we're going to draw out all the carbons, including the chlorine right here. And then we include all of the bonds, H3. This carbon already has three bonds. It's only going to need one hydrogen. This one needs two because it's plain. And the ones on the end need three. Okay. And I just want to quickly point out, if you had something that looked like um, this, the structure would look like this. This one on the end would only need two because a double bond counts as two. Just keep that keep that in mind. Okay, so you're, you're counting total number of bonds, but we can ignore that for now. Okay, uh, so that's our extended, and now our condensed. We look at the units, CH3 for this first one. Second one is CH2. Third one is CH. We only have one of those. We also have a CL attached, so that's going to go right here, CHCL. And now we start with, the, so all these, this is attached to the carbon, this is attached to the carbon, everything behind the carbon is attached to it, and then we end up with CH3. Okay, so if you see something like this, the condensed form, you should be able to draw the extended form. If you see the extended, you could draw skeletal, or in any order, because these all mean the same thing.